Everything's fine. Okay, no, I know good. what's happening. When your connection's bad, it just the screen comes up black. Yeah, well, I'll just pretend nothing's wrong and just hope for the best. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this kind of thing, it's um at least for like indigenous people, what the tendency is is that when the Canadian government uses these things, they use it to say that the reason why indigenous people have problems is because of things that happened in the past. And this new government is a good government and is we, we've drawn a line under that bad government and there's no continuity here. Um, we recognize these things, you know, Trudeau will go to an um, event and will shed a tear and, you know, close up, please. Um, and it's, you know, this is the good benevolent government. Um, and when it comes to Indigenous people, it's really annoying because the Canadian government now still does the same horrific things, but they're like super duper apologetic about it. And so it <laughs> that's how I feel about Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, but it really boils my blood because they're like, um, they'll say that the reason why Indigenous people have problems, I wrote a paper about this, published paper about this about two years ago, if anyone wants to read it, on Indigenous parenting in Canada. And they'll say the reason why Indigenous people have problems is because mothers didn't learn how to mother because of the mm -hmm. disruption of generations, first through colonialism and then through in, uh, residential schools and then the 60s scoop where they took thousands and thousands of children into um, care um, and into the care of, of, of a lot of white families as well. Um, and, they, and they'll say, well, you know, and like if you look at the discourse that was attached to when they were actually taking those kids, they were saying it's because Indigenous mothers can't be mothers. Now we have a crisis in Canada where we're still taking enormous amounts of Indigenous children. And we're saying it's because Indigenous mothers can't be mothers. But we're saying, oops, it's <laughs> sorry, you know, that was because of the bad old government. Now you really can't mother. But it's not your fault. It's not your fault. You're damaged and you're traumatized. We're so sorry. We have to take your kids anyway. You know, mm. so they, they're still placing mm. the blame on Indigenous people and they're de deflecting attention from the most obvious causes of social problems, which is which is poverty. Um, the fact that some reserves don't have proper drinking water. But no, it's because we're traumatized and we're not good parents. That's what they'll say. And it, it really, really bothers me. Um, and like that you're like a ward of the state often, that you're you're far from the um, centers. You can't get a decent job. And if you do, you it, it's extremely complicated story but what winds up happening is they locate all these problems in the past so their their sources in the past safely in the past that's their that's the explicit reason that they say there are problems but the implicit reason is the effect of that past on your head on your brain there's something wrong with you and they'll and they, they'll dress it up it's a, it's the same narrative that's been around for a very long time but they dress it up in this language of medicine and health and care and they're very deferent oh your cultures are so beautiful and blah 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 and you've lost your culture and that's the reason why you have all these problems now anybody clued up on sociology will know that that's a very old way of blaming um for instance people in the inner cities for why they have social problems or because they don't have culture have you ever heard of that, the cultural deprivation thesis? Oh, yes. Um, and it's the same idea, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same idea where it's like indigenous people, the reason why you, you, don't, you have problems is because you lost your culture. And people will buy into this because they're like, yeah, like, I love my culture. I think it's really beautiful and this sort of thing. And they're telling me it's beautiful. And I'm invited to then believe, well, the reason why we have problems is because we've lost that. And so then the government will come and package all these things that they want as like cultural renewal. <laughs> and then well, they're like, is you back your culture um before we went on there i actually hit up a friend of show and uh, my good friend to ray reed and told him about what we were talking about and uh, this is what he said he said when casting contemporary inequality as the consequence of past traumas one displaces from the frame fixes for the inequalities that are before us worse yet these frames frequently insist that the suffering of our distant and not so distant ancestors is our suffering yeah. This not only reflects a disregard for great changes that have taken place over time, but it also usually funnels into epigenetic or mystical accounts of inequality yes. that are the flip side of the same biodeterministic assumptions about people that drive unabashed racists like Charles Murray. Yes, that is basically my argument. We no, we no longer need to speak. That's literally just <laughs> game over. <laughs> we just hang out now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, this is a lot of Terrain's work. 
um, in towards freedom yeah. and uh, the, the case against race reductionism. And it's, you know, been the work of his father as well and his grandfather for generations. So his take is, is a pretty good one. What say you, Tucson? Um, it sounds like he's saying Candace Owens was right. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> She's like, you know, he goes, on. Slaves. <laughs> he goes on to say more. Do you want to hear the whole quote? That's just part of it. Sure. Yeah. Um, he, he, uh, he says, a wise HBO gangster once said, you can't put shit back in a donkey. While there is no doubt that slavery and Jim Crow disadvantaged uh, African Americans materially, socially, and politically, there is nothing we can do to right those wrongs because slavery's victims are dead, and as most of Jim Crow's. Insistence that we can make the irreparable right ultimately takes us away from practical solutions to real inequalities mm -hmm. that are before us while simultaneously licensing understandings of inequality that both proceed from reactionary assumptions about humanity, quote, uh, or in parentheses he writes, that are too close to Charles Murray or Richard Spencer, and enable the continued marginalization and exploitation of dis disproportionately black and brown people. Of course, he's writing that in the black American context. Yeah, it's it's a, it's basically the same argument. In my defense, I, I, I published this two years ago, so it's not like I'm <laughs> tailing him or something. I, but, but yeah, it's the exact same thing that's going on. And anybody, like uh, anybody who has a background in this stuff will see it immediately. Like I went to a conference in 2013 and like where I got the idea to do that research that I published. But I went to this conference and um, it was an indigenous information governance conference. I went with my aunt who's like, she's really big into like indigenous, like policy and that kind of thing, um, works in, in, at Indian Affairs in, in Canada. And she's like, totally passive. She had no idea. She's like, oh, these are these wonderful, great initiatives that we're bringing up. It's really gonna help the people and especially you kids coming up, you know, you're really gonna bring our culture back. And I was like, mm. so I go to this conference and the, the first um, presentations are about how indigenous people are tired of being um, studied all the time. Like uh, anybody who wants to get a master's thesis, they're like, oh, I'm going to go do my research at the reserve. And, you know, they gather their data, they get their master's and off they go and get nice lives. And what, what do Indigenous people get? Nothing, right? You just mm -hmm. constantly study the subject of these studies. And they're like, we don't want it. Don't want it anymore. We don't know what happens to this data about us. Never benefits us. You know, so we want to be able to govern our own information, which I was like, this is great. This is really good. And then all the rest of the presentations for the rest of the day were all these agencies trying to figure out how to get around this. <laughs> 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 and they were like, through like the, but you had like, but it was all through such deferential, kind language, mental health, well being. And um, we have to really, the elders, you know, the elders are so important to Indigenous culture. So we got to go to the elders because they, what they're saying, like they wanted to do this like parenting um interventions because they're so convinced that indigenous people are bad parents and so they're like but they can't get to the parents because they don't trust the parents right so they they want to go to the grandparents who are often taking care of the kids so they're like oh it's the elders and you know we all know how important the elders are so that's why we want to work with the elders and we're going to give the homework to the elders we're going to give this thing to the that this health intervention to the elders you know this sort of thing and as i was sitting there i was like this whole narrative that they're putting across is the same damn one that they've been saying for a really, really long time. Um, that it's it's down to, it's, it's the parent's fault, um, that everything important happened in the past and all that really needs to happen is you just kind of go into people's minds and by making them feel better or adopt the right outlooks or develop a sense of autonomy because they don't believe autonomy is actually inbuilt. You have, to, you're not, this whole thing, sorry, I'm going off the topic here, but no, 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 no. With a lot of these discourses, one of the most common critiques that you see in the literature is about it being a neoliberal attempt to create autonomous subjects. And then they'll go off on that and they'll say like, oh, so these autonomous subjects won't cause social problems and they won't um, draw on expensive support and the state then abandons them. That is not the case. If you actually see what's going on, you can't be an autonomous subject. You exercising your autonomy is a risk. You have to be, this is Julian Reed and, and David Chandler say this, you have to 
live dangerously. That is live in a dangerous world, but never act dangerously, right? You mm -hmm. acting of your own free will is a risk. You have to learn not to be autonomous, but to be heteronymous. That is, you are not an autonomous subject. And the fact that you believe you are is the source of all these social problems. You believe that you can parent properly? Oh, that's overconfidence because actually you're terrible and you're going to damage your children. And that's just, and like, I've seen some research with, um, uh, what's her name? I can't remember her name, but it's just the natural. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe on your way out. You can catch the live stream of This Is Revolution every Tuesday through Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific Time and Saturday, 9 a.m. Pacific Time. This is Revolution.